Hey guys, this is Malka Asad, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll be talking about the differences in medical or surgical residency between the US and the UK. To discuss this topic, I'm excited to have Dr. Anita Mohan, who is a PGY5 plastic surgery resident at the Mayo Clinic and did part of her residency training in the UK to talk about this topic. Welcome, Anita, to the channel. Thank you, Malki, for having me. <laughs> I'm very excited to discuss this topic with you. Uh, I would like to start by asking about the different requirements to enter UK residency and the US residency. Um, so I think it also depends uh, if you're coming as an IMG. So my disclosure is, is that I graduated and I trained in the UK, um, graduated in the UK. So I wasn't applying for the um, IMG status there. Um, and so for that, let's start with that. So there's different things for both. Um, as an IMG, from what I, um, I've looked at, to begin, you have to, the beginning is you have to apply for what we call General Medical Council um, registration. And to do that, either you have done an internship in your home country, which is then approved and can be accredited by the GMC for which you have to undergo an application, or you have to apply for what we call foundation training. So foundation training is essentially two years of an internship program. And that is how you have to start in order to start the process of uh, any training, whether it's surgical or medical in the uh, UK. Um, in the US, it's, kind of, it's a bit more concentrated in terms of out of medical school, or if you're applying as an IMG, you're applying directly into the specialty um, in most cases, or uh, if you're in something like cardiology, you're applying for internal medicine first, and then you'll do your fellowship. So you, your internship is more likely to be integrated as part of your residency um, program. Um, and so that's the main kind of differences bet between the two. Um, each one in most places, you probably have to have your proof of being able to speak English, you have to have your visa status or your um, residency um, status um, kind of approved or organized. And then those are the two main sort of systems to start out in training. Awesome. So in, in the US, you start directly with applying to certain residencies. In the UK, you have to do foundation year one and two before you apply to residency. Yes and no. So uh, let's get, that's a very important point. So in the UK, it's kind of more divided. So you start out of medical school, two years of foundation training. That is the equivalent of intern year internship in the uh, US. And um, in England, it's called it's used to be it's used to be called house officers, which is uh, a term that in other countries is they're still familiar with. So you have to do your house officer to get your General Medical Council registration. After two years of foundation training, you are then eligible to apply for either core training in medicine or surgery. And there are some specialties that have a far, like a straight track um, from foundation training. And you have to probably, it keeps changing, but um, no, Back when I was training there, for example, neurosurgery or obstetrics and gynecology and a family practice or general practice out of foundation training, you can then apply directly. If you're going into a surgical specialty or a medical specialty, you then have to apply for a two year core medical or core surgical training program, during which time you then have to also get your MRCP or MRCS examinations which are kind of an intermediate examination with the college and um, in whichever field you're going through. After that, then you apply for your specialization. So your core surgical training, let's say, so I'm in plastic surgery, would be the equivalent of your first couple of years doing general surgical specialties in your residency, for example. And then you apply for your specialty training which is, um, or your NTN or your number. And then that is usually five to six years. Um, so it's, it's kind of segregated. Mm -hmm. And in the US you have to do uh, 
USMLE step one, USMLE step two, and CS, which was replaced this year specifically with the OAT exam. But what are the equivalents of that for uh, in the UK for both UK, UK students and for IMGs? We don't have national examinations um, that we, we do. So it's, it's your university grades, uh, essentially, and then you're applying into um, a kind of a match for the foundation program. Um, for IMGs, they typically had to do their PLAB examinations. Um, I think there have been some recent changes uh, to the requirements um, for that. Um, and now I think the, in the UK, um, IMGs can directly apply for that match to get into a foundation program, which wasn't the case in the past. Um, and so it's really your university grades. We do not have national examinations per se, um, like the USMLEs. Nice. And in the US, there are different uh, criteria to allow comparing applicants, like the scores of the USMLE exam, the research, uh, volunteering, uh, letters of recommendation, electives. What are the criteria they use in the UK when taking applicants into the foundation years and the surgical core surgical training and afterwards? So it's very different at those different stages. I think in the foundation year, you don't need um, you don't need as much <laughs> um, in terms of um, having research and having uh, all these extracurriculars and things like that. Um, because for a lot of us, um, as in medical, um, from medical school, you are usually guaranteed to get into somewhere to be to get your then general medical registration council registration. Um, I think having the electives, good references, good um, and scores, and part of the, your activities and stuff show you're a well-rounded person. I think all of that does contribute. So they, you know, you do put that on your application in terms of your electives and what your interests are, etc. So I think the foundation program is a bit more straightforward. Um, then when you are getting into the core medical, core training programs, and um, let's go start with that, it becomes a bit more competitive. So um, on, in the, on the UK websites, there's a lot of information from the deaneries that actually tell you exactly what are the person specifications that are required. So they tell you, you need to have your BLA, basic life support, or you need certain courses to have completed, you need to have done certain parts of an exam like the MRCP or MRCS. And they say what, what's necessary at baseline and what is ideal for their ideal candidate. So look at the ideal candidate column and make sure you can fulfill all of those and tick as many of those boxes as possible in addition to obviously the basic requirements. So for surgery, it becomes a bit more competitive. You might want to show more research and electives and you have to have um, during our training we have to do assessments which are signed off by consultants which is part of an annual review so you there is always evidence and you have to bring that evidence to your um, interview actually and so you have that so if you're coming from outside I think it's a good uh, it's good practice to collect some evidence if it's not specific um like clinical exams or as procedures, at least a letter highlighting that you have good clinical skills and that you've done certain cases or managed certain types of patients. I think at least that would work in your favor because I think in a lot of other places, you might not think about that. But in the UK, we have every year, we have to have evidence. And so when you're trying to compete or apply, make sure you have some sort of evidence uh, for that. Um, then you get into specialty training, even more competitive, even more specific. So I think for plastics, you need in the UK, you need like the care of the critically ill surgical patient course, ATLS, uh, you need to have research, you need to show all these different attributes of showing your passion of why you want to go into a certain area of surgery, and there'll be the equivalence of medicine. Um, in addition to bringing your portfolio of evidence of your research papers, you have them printed out, your audits, which are quality improvement projects, printed them out, your presentations, 
you know, your assessments that you've done, your references. We bring a, a folder of all our stuff with us to our interview and actually they review that. So it's a portfolio. And so that you have collected from foundation year. So it's getting bigger each year, but that it becomes more competitive. So there are more requirements each year. Wow, that's very interesting because this is different from the US match process where you have only one match and it's very competitive, but once you get in, you're in. Yeah, correct. So the only exception maybe is internal medicine to cardiology where, or the internal medicine to other uh, subspecialties okay. of internal medicine you, where you go through the match twice, but most other surgical specialties, you go directly into, into the specialty. Correct, yeah, it's very different that way. Mm -hmm. So can you compare, for example, the timing for if I want to become a cardiologist in the US versus UK, general surgeon, plastic surgery, what are the different uh, time or years if I want to do that in the UK versus US? So um, recapping for the UK, um, after medical school, the, the shortest amount of time. So two years foundation training, a minimum, or it's now two years of core training. Let's say, let's pick cardiology, two years of core medical training. And then I think it's five or six years of sub subspecialty training. So that is a minimum of like nine, 10 years of straight up residency. That does not include for competitive specialties or competitive jobs, um, research, PhDs, other things that are time out of the program. Um, or some orthopedics and some plastic surgery uh, programs. People used to do research, take time out to just get into the plastic surgery subspecialty. And so if you imagine it's now 12 years kind of um, sort of training. So the, the plastic surgery time is similar to the general surgery, similar to cardiology around nine to 10 years? It is minimum of 10 years, yes. Yeah. So it's two years foundation, two years of core surgical training, then you're competing for a plastic surgery number. And then um, that is then six years. If you don't get it the first time round, uh, sometimes you can still work as a resident in plastic surgery. And there are some posts that can count towards your training. You have to go through another special process to count that time. Um, or there is non-training. So you're still working, but it's not being accredited but at least you're still in the field and you're still doing that. So uh, those jobs over the years have got less, but I think there's, there are some that's still there. Wow, that's in contrast to the US where cardiology is three years, internal medicine is three years, cardiology, uh, plastic surgery is six years, and uh, general surgery is five years. So this is at least four to five years difference. Yes, correct. That brings us to the end of the first episode regarding the differences in residency between the US and the UK. In the next episode, we'll talk about the difference in income, lifestyle, and also the research opportunities as a resident and as a faculty. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode or future episodes related to residency, the match process, or research. If you like the video, hit the like button and make sure to tell your colleagues about it so you can help the channel grow and help me continue to do the videos like this to help you through your residency journey. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at Malka Asad, Twitter at Malka Asad, or my Facebook page, Malka Asad MD. Thank you all so much for watching and see you in future videos.